Hello and welcome to this episode of the Frontier Tech series hosted by the Central Insights Unit at GSMA Mobile for Development. This is a fireside chat with experts from the industry to explore opportunities on leveraging Frontier Technologies for sustainable development. Today we are happy to have with us Abhinav Rawat, who is the Head of Product at Fasal, an agriculture intelligence company based in India. Fasal uses Frontier Technologies like AI and IoT to help smallholder farmers make well-informed decisions on the field. Today's discussion will focus on Fasal's approach to making technology-based advisory services accessible in low-resource settings in India, as well as the challenges and opportunities of using these technologies in smallholder agriculture. So Abhinav, let me start off with my first question. What is Fasal's approach to leveraging Frontier Technologies and what has your impact been so far? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you Tanvi for having me here. Uh, it is a privilege and honor to be invited by GSMA in their fireside chats of the Frontier Tech series. Coming to your question, you know, uh, specifically if you talk about uh, in the context of India, Agriculture has been the backbone of our economy for centuries and smallholder farmers play a pivotal role in sustaining this sector. Nearly 85% of all farms are less than 2 hectares in land size. However, farmers often face numerous challenges including unpredictable weather, pests and diseases in their farms, navigating water scarcity, resource optimization for agri inputs such as fertilizers and pesticides, so on and so forth. These challenges club with the guesswork in farming practices by farmers you know, result in direct or indirect losses also can result in lower yield, both qualitatively and quantitatively. This is where Fasal comes into picture to solve these problems which are being faced by farmers and to remove the guesswork from farming. So what does Fasal really do? You know, uh, Fasal provides farmers with timely and actionable insights and intelligence on crops, soil and water management, as well as pests and diseases and weather related intelligence. And how is Fasal able to deliver it? Fussell deploys IoT-led devices with remote sensors that can be placed at farms to record crop, soil, and weather conditions. This real-time data collected by the device is harnessed using AI and crop models to generate farm-specific, crop-specific, and crop growth stage-specific intelligence that is delivered to the farmers through Fussell mobile application. Now, this intelligence is not only actionable, but also predictive in nature. As a result of this, fossil farmers have experienced up to 60% reduction in pesticide spray, 50% reduction in water used for irrigation, and up to 40% increase in their yield. Till date, fossil has saved over 25 billion liters of water by enabling farmers to make data-driven irrigation decisions. And this isn't just about numbers, it is about conserving a precious natural resource. It is a testament to the power of technology in making our agriculture practices more sustainable and responsible. Additionally, Fasal is also solving for continuous supply of high quality of horticulture produce for the modern trade or general trade buyers of fresh produce. Since Fasal has the visibility of both supply side from Fasal farmers and demand, demand side from potential buyers, we are able to provide better price realization to the farmers for their agri-produce while ensuring consistent high quality supply to our buyers. Okay, great. <clears throat> Thanks, Abhina, for the introduction and for setting the context so well. So, uh, uh, starting off with the IoT sensors that you mentioned, uh, can you tell us a bit more about the kind of infrastructure and ecosystem around them that is required to function? And uh, what are the kinds of data that you're using for this? Sure. So, uh, the functioning of IoT sensors in our agri-tech solution relies on a well-structured infrastructure and supportive ecosystem that seamlessly collects, processes, and delivers crop intelligence to empower farmers. To address your question pertaining to data, infrastructure, and ecosystem required for functioning of the entire fossil offering, let's address them one by one. When it comes to data, there are primarily three types of data we are talking about. First is the soil data. Now, this includes soil moisture at different depths which is captured via soil moisture sensor and then soil temperature which is captured via soil temperature sensor then we have crop growth related data this data includes parameters like leaf wetness air temperature humidity and pressure as well as lux and solar intensity data this data enables us to monitor crop growth stages as well as conditions pertaining to risk of certain diseases and pests in the farm and finally we have weather data we capture real-time weather information that aids in pertain planning activities monitoring and predicting rain and preventing weather related crop damage by recommending necessary changes in farming practices. 
this is captured via rainfall gauge wind speed and wind direction sensors that enable not only real time monitoring but also allows us to deliver microclimate forecast for the specific plot we additionally also use satellite imagery data with respect to weather related offering that we have so these were the three primary types of data now uh, with respect to infrastructure and ecosystem the iot device that is deployed at farm has 13 sensors that measure diverse parameters in real time and it is powered by solar energy so farmers do not have to continuously worry about power source for the device for connectivity we rely on robust connectivity options that is cellular networks and we use m2m sim cards of different telecom service providers primarily depending upon the region's connectivity when uh, it comes to data storage and computing collected data is securely stored in cloud-based databases for real-time access and analysis we use scalable cloud solutions to ensure data availability and reliability and use cloud services for data processing and running our crop models. Next is artificial intelligence and crop models. We use machine learning models for generating microclimatic weather forecasts for each plot, such as temperature and humidity parameters. While all the data that we capture at farm level is used as an input to our crop models, which is the core engine that enables farm specific, crop specific, and crop growth stage specific actionable intelligence. Also, wherever we provide services, we do have a customer service team on ground that facilitates deployment of devices and farmer onboarding. This is really needed as it only as it not only builds the required trust amongst farmers, but also ensures we are always there to resolve any issue in person as well. Lastly. Mm -hmm. Farmers access data through a user-friendly mobile application available in regional languages. The app provides real-time data, crop intelligence, and historical data for informed decision-making by the farmers. Additionally, we also send actionable crop intelligence via SMS to the farmers. Understood. <clears throat> and uh, uh, it's really interesting you talk about also not just the sensors that you have and data you use, but also how do you translate in, it into an accessible solution that smallholder farmers can use? So I uh, would love to know a bit more about that. How do you make sure that the solution that you had, which is, uh, it's quite uh, hardware heavy, right? 13 uh, sensors that you want to put in the field. So how do you ensure that that is accessible and usable for smallholder farmers? All right. So to ensure that our offering is accessible and usable by smallholder farmers, we do take some initiatives. For instance, we conduct awareness and educational events at district and village level, where farmers across different categories, including smallholder farmers, attend the events. In such events, our focus is towards making farmers aware about the capabilities of the technology in solving their utmost needs pertaining to farming. Also, our offering come in different pricing models to cater needs of diverse farmer groups. For instance, our pricing models include device financing model, wherein our banking partners finance the device at minimal EMI, while some of the pricing models also allow farmers to try our offerings for a reasonable period by paying marginal upfront cost and make an informed decision anytime later whether or not he or she would like to continue with our offering. So this gives up pretty much uh, a lot of flexibility for the farmers. Further, the ROI, you know, have been so positive for most farmers that they have recovered the cost of IoT device in the same season by saving water, reduction in pesticides and insecticide sprays, increase in yield and quality of produce. Also, um, I would like to add over here, our product is designed to ensure we do not overload the farmer with a lot of information upfront. Instead, we provide actionable crop intelligence throughout the crop life cycle, which enables farmers to consume information, which is actionable. And we ensure we do not trigger decision paralysis for farmers by providing them a lot of information that can be avoided. Mm. To emphasize again, uh, our entire offering of crop intelligence is delivered to farmers in vernacular languages via Fussel mobile application to cater the farmers who have who may not be proficient in dominant language, say English or Hindi. Additionally, yeah. we also uh, collaborate with FPOs that facilitate scalability and outreach to smallholder farmers for broader adoption. And we conduct regular small gatherings of farmers at district and village level, wherein they can be made aware about the technology and their queries can be addressed one on one in person. Understood. So, uh, yeah, it's it's great that actually one of the biggest questions that are there around inclusivity is how do you make this technology available in local languages? So that's one of the biggest barriers uh, in terms of scaling. So. Um, Going off on that, the fact that Fussel has already established a presence in multiple states within India, 
uh, what was that process like? What were the challenges uh, that you had to overcome uh, to grow your footprint across the country? And uh, especially in terms of customizing the kind of solution that you're offering, could, you know, depending on the crop, depending on the climate. So um, uh, in addition to that, what were the kinds of local partnerships that you had to leverage to, to build this footprint? Right. So uh, expanding our footprints across India has been an exciting journey. But it has come with its unique set of challenges, particularly in customizing our technology solutions to suit the diverse needs of farmers across the country. Our approach has been to provide plot specific, crop specific, and crop growth stage specific intelligence. But achieving this customization has required addressing several key challenges. And like, firstly, let's say if you focus on India's agriculture landscape is incredibly diverse with varying farming practices, crop choices, and regional climates. So customizing our solution to cater to these differences has been a significant challenge. For example, what works for a pomegranate farmer in one region may not be suitable for a pomegranate farmer in another. To address this, we have invested in research and development to fine tune our crop models to accommodate these variations. Second is data accuracy and availability. The effectiveness of our solution relies heavily on data accuracy and availability. We have built our crop models and our entire offering to handle unforeseen scenario where there is a period of data loss, let's say, maybe due to scenarios such as malfunction sensors or temporary network connectivity issues. Besides this, raising awareness amongst farmers about the benefits of our technology has been an ongoing effort. In some cases, there was initial skepticism about adopting new digital tools. Uh, however, we have addressed this challenge by working closely with local agricultural entities such as FPOs, as well as influential farmers of the region to conduct awareness campaigns and training workshops for farmers. Essentially, building trust has been key to driving adoption. Furthermore, recognizing that technology alone is not enough. We have established a local presence in various re regions. We have deployed field teams who can assist farmers with onboarding, troubleshooting, and understanding the insights provided by our app. These field teams play a critical role in bridging the initial gap between technology and its practical application. Partnerships, we have also been instrumental in our expansion efforts. We have collaborated with local agriculture universities, national research institutions, and government agencies to access domain-specific knowledge and research data. This has allowed us to have a wider reach to smallholder farmers, and such partnerships also help us in validating and improving our models. In conclusion, customizing our technology solutions to the diverse need of Indian farmers has indeed been challenging but rewarding. We have addressed these challenges by fine-tuning our technology, enhancing data availability, uh, raising awareness, providing local field support, and forging meaningful partnership. Through these efforts, we are not only customizing our solution, but also contributing to the empowerment and growth of smallholder farmers across India. Thanks, Abhinav. And, um, you know, when we first uh, had a conversation about this, you had uh, talked very much about how Fussell's approach is always focused on the outcome, on having a favorable outcome for the smallholder farmer. So uh, how would you say this approach has changed uh, over your journey? Uh, and you know, how has it reflected in terms of how your solutions are designed? And uh, how do you see this changing in the future? What do you think is the need of the farmer uh, uh, going ahead? So uh, in the early stages of our journey, we conducted extensive surveys and interviews with farmers to gain a deep understanding of the challenges they face and the stark contrast between traditional farming practices and data-driven farming. Now, these observations and insights played a pivotal role in shaping the design and development of our products. However, it is pertinent to emphasize that our ultimate goal is to create a tangible impact on agriculture. And this impact is only realized when farmers embrace and implement the necessary changes in their practices facilitated by Fussell's crop intelligence. Farmers essentially have to go through the unlearning process before they can comfortably and confidently adopt to new practices. Essentially speaking, we are engaged in the change management revolution within the realm of farming practices. Achieving this change management requires us to place a significant emphasis on the behavioral aspect of how farmers interact with technology. It's crucial to understand the cause effect relationship between what we provide to farmers and how when and to what degree farmers adopt to these offerings. This involves a key shift in product development and design with a heightened focus on the behavioral dimension of a farmer's interaction with technology. This 
includes considerations such as the emotional aspects and the establishment of trust in any offering that is presented to the farmer even before he adopts it and make necessary changes in the practices that will help him achieve the desired benefits. So we essentially need to expedite the unlearning process for farmers through the product. One remarkable change we have observed in the outlook of the smallholder farmers we work with, initially they were somewhat hesitant to embrace technology fully. However, as they began to see the tangible benefits of our application or our main product offering, which was increased yields, reduced resource wastage and improved profitability, this trust and enthusiasm grew. They become, became more receptive to adopting new practices and technologies. In fact, it is heartening to witness this transformation and realize the impact we are making on, the, on their livelihoods and the DNA of the farming community. And to decode the farmer's behavior comprehensively, we go beyond qualitative interviews and surveys now. We leverage the wealth of data at our disposal. Now, this data provides us with invaluable insights into how farmers engage with our technology, what decisions they make based on our recommendations, and how their practices evolve over time. By analyzing this data, we can better understand not only the quantitative metrics, but also the qualitative aspects of their interaction with technology, allowing us to tailor our products to smoothen out the adoption process. So this shift involves a deep dive into behavioral and emotional aspects of farmer tech interactions backed by data-driven insights. It's through this holistic approach that we aim to empower farmers and drive sustainable transformation in agriculture. Looking ahead, there are still uh, several challenges in agriculture where frontier technologies like IoT and AI will play a crucial role in finding solutions. For instance, climate change adaptation. With climate change leading to more unpredictable weather patterns, extreme events and shifts in growing season, precision agriculture powered by IoT and AI can help farmers make real-time adjustments to optimize crop management and resource use. Also, the agriculture sector faces challenges related to labor shortages. So autonomous and semi-autonomous machinery guided by AI can assist in tasks such as planting, harvesting, and weeding. Further soil health and nutrient management, smart pest and disease management, market linkage, supply discovery by potential buyers, and thus maximizing price realization for farmers produce are also some of the challenges that can be resolved. Additionally, scalability and affordability remains critical issues, especially in regions with a high proportion of smallholder farmers like India. We aim to make our solutions more accessible and cost effective, ensuring that even the farmers with smallest land holdings don't have to think twice before making a purchase decision. These are the domains where technology can bring about transformative changes, in my opinion, in this sector. Yeah, I think the potential for AI uh, or frontier technologies in general, is, it seems limitless in, in this sector, especially when you have a, a large population of smallholder farmers that could benefit from these technologies. So, and um, I feel like we could keep uh, going on talking about this, but we do have limited time. So um, we'll have to end it uh, here today, but uh, thanks very much Abhinav for your time and for coming out uh, and joining us here today. And uh, this concludes this episode of the Frontier Tech series hosted by the Central Insights Unit at JSMA Mobile for Development. Uh, please look out for our next episodes that will be coming out soon. Thanks very much. Thank you, Sangeet.